Welcome back. Um, this is going to be a book haul video. Um, they're all pagan books, so except for one magazine. Other than that, they're all pagan books. So let's start with um, pretty much all of these came from half bright half priced books except for two of them. Um, the two came I got from Amazon. So this one I got is the Go the Warrior Goddess Way. And this is written by the same author that wrote the Warrior Goddess Training. And she also has a workbook. I don't have the workbook and I have not finished the Warrior the Warrior Goddess Training book, but um I had liked it so far and I pre-ordered this and then <laughs> I kind of forgot to un-pre-order it and I was just going to get it after I finished the first book but it arrived and so I decided eh, I'd keep it. Whenever I finish the first book I can just move on to this one so no big deal. Uh, I think I'm just going to put that down here. Okay, so the next one that I got is, and this is a uh, I want to say a sequel or a continuation of her previous book. This is Sacred Motherhood. And her first, the, well, I don't know if it's her first book, but the previous book to this, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it had to do with kind of like Sacred Motherhood, but while you're pregnant or going through your pregnancy. Although I think there's something in here about sacred motherhood during the time you're pregnant as well. But I think, and if I'm not mistaken, unless I'm thinking another author, but I think it is this one. Or these two, because I think it's two, yep. These two women. So it's Sacred Motherhood, an inspirational guide and journal for mindful mothering children of all ages. And since I, well, uh, my stepson is grown now but um, my two little girls are you know one is going to be two and the other one is seven and um, I just thought this would be an interesting book and you'll see that there's places in here that's kind of like um, a workbook um, so like after the chapter well, I don't know if it's after the chapter it's a little kind of here and um, each one it's like a little uh, like a workbook inside so you have like um sorry <laughs> here oops let me move okay here you have questions and then you have a uh, space to journal in or to answer those questions and it's each section or chapter um it goes through by weeks like you can work on this uh you know kind of how you would do a year and a day program it's like each week is something else you would work on that's how this is set up to work in uh, each week um, but I just thought it would be you know I'll show you a little bit of the inside I just thought it would be um, an interesting read you know so all right, let's look at the table of contents show you we'll get there yeah. okay um, um, it's a big table of contents so I'm just gonna just read a couple of things um, first is divided in parts uh, for each season so you have four parts so for spring um, and then you have like a 13 week thing and it's each divided into like 13 weeks I think um, you have 13 weeks of things that you would work on. So for the first part is spring, and it's uh, the first week would be like the call, um, sacred motherhood. The second week is birth, a mother is born. Um, then there's sacred feminine, the goddess within. Do it with joy, claiming your bliss. Um, imperfection, no mud, no lotus. And in the summer part, some of the things you would work on is embodiment, what makes you come alive, uh, trust in the flow, 
-hmm. Beauty, the beauty way, it's the only way. Uh, sacred play, awaken in your inner child. Uh, fall, some of the things would be nest, weaving a sacred home. Uh, sacred earth, returning to the mother. Uh, healing, beautiful journey, forgiveness. Uh, rip and release. Storytelling, weaving a web for the soul. And then some of the things in winter would be celebration, creating epic moments, loving kindness, right speech, and right action, uh, breaking bread, homemade traditions, family, we are one and many, sisterhood, finding your tribe, uh, empowerment, your presence is your power. So that's some of the things you would work on in this book. Um, so I thought it would be an interesting read to see how thick it is. So I got that. And then, okay, the rest of these came from half price books. And, like, I don't know, maybe half I purchased, half my husband purchased. Um, uh... So I guess I'll start with the magazine, which is not pagan or witchy at all, but I thought it was very interesting. Um, at half price books, I got it for two ninety nine. The regular price is five ninety nine, and it's called Afar, and it's about uh, different places around the world. Um, and I thought this would be very very interesting to read. I'm at the bottom. It tells you. Uh, some of the things that will be inside is Brazil's most surprising city, Brazil's most surprising city, Paris with the Barefoot Contessa, and then of course I had to get it because New York City's best classic neighborhood. And so for like New York City, it kind of tell it kind of uh, tells you some of the. Um, I don't want to say hot spots or maybe secret places because I don't know if I guess if you're a New Yorker you would know about some of these places some of these I don't know about but one that I do is um, the American Museum of Natural History which I've gone there many many times and it's right by Central Park um, another place like here is um, Lincoln Center I saw a play at Lincoln Center it was uh, called La Boheme and uh, Zabar's. Zabar's is like, it's not a restaurant, it's kind of like a grocery store, it's kind of expensive, but they have amazing food. They have this amazing cheesecake and they sell uh, arugula, which is so good. Their arugula is so good, but there's other things you could get there. They have like breads and coffees and teas and um, different like spices, seasonings kind of thing. And my mom absolutely loves this place. Absolutely. Um, uh, they also have things like uh, article uh, articles in uh, Chile, India. Um, I forget what other places, but just so you can kind of see what's inside. So here's uh, something, um, uh, article in India, and uh, Milan, this is Milan, article, um, there's some stuff here in, um, uh, down south, Detroit, there's articles. So it's just like, I just thought it was interesting. Um, when I read through it, I'm gonna see what I think. And if I like it, I think I'm gonna um, uh, get the subscription. It is, for six issues, it's $20. For 12 issues, it's $32. So I don't know, we'll see. Okay, then I got uh, Yule. You know, everybody knows about these little books that came out by Llewellyn for each Sabbat. And each Sabbat, I keep saying, 
I'm going to buy one. And then I never do. Well, now that Yule will be fast approaching, uh, Samhain is almost here. I thought I would get this. Look at this. I just you how to make uh, dip candles. Um, what else is in here? Sugar cookie recipes. I don't particularly like sugar cookies. But that is because I am a very picky eater. Like, like abnormally picky. <laughs> uh, tree tree trimming chili you know I think I might do that my husband loves chili maybe for the night that we're doing the tree maybe I would um, and invite my stepson and his girlfriend because they've got their own apartment now because you know they're growing up <laughs> um, but yeah make a dinner chili dinner um, here's some a herbal magical tea and a uh, generosity charm so yeah and then I think there's like lore in here yeah the this one is the modern pagans relationship to the wheel um, section on the old ways uh, the mythical cycles of Yule and then it has here the goddess, queen, goddesses, queens, mothers, and heroines. And then the gods, kings, fathers, and heroes. So, pretty excited about finding that one. Okay, so this book I got is um, okay, I could be saying this wrong, so you know you know how I am. I can put your words like nobody's business. Uh, the Ver Virgo Book of Erotic Myths and Legends. And, um, and I know I still have it. I don't know. I don't know if it made the move. Um, when I was in college, I read uh, Metamorphoses by Ovid. And Ovid is a Greek writer. Uh, I think maybe philosopher or Roman I think Greek though and so in that were all the Greek myths that pertained to transformation so you had a story about Medusa how Medusa came Medusa um, the story of Apollo and I think it was Daphne and how she was transformed into a laurel tree uh, you have all of those things. Um, it's just tales. It just pertains to Greek myths that dealt with transformations. Um, well, he also has um, erotic tales or something like that. I can't remember, but they were a really interesting read. Um, so I thought this would be interesting too. And so some of the stories, which are some of the ones, some of the Greek myths that I know about, some that I absolutely know nothing about uh, but it's not I don't know is it just Greek myths no I think it's just myths yeah because I remember there was uh, I think there was one pertaining to Inanna I'm not sure but here you have like um, Hera's Deceit yeah okay the arousal of Inanna Hera's Deceit um, the queen of the Sumer country Iset's Love Quest. Um, let me see. Oh, wait, what was that? Oh, I thought I saw something else. <laughs> okay. The Conception of Hatshepsut. Uh, Dagda's Love Trial. So you have stories from different uh, mythologies. Um, so we've had um, uh, Egyptian, uh, Sumerian, uh, Greek, uh, Dagda is Celtic. Um, what else do you have here? Sappho. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the ones, because I can't tell from the title what um, pantheon it may deal with. But I thought that would be an excellent read. It is hardcover. 
uh, what does it have here? Oh, it even has, okay. Uh, back here it says, From the rapturous sexual awakening of Inanna and the bittersweet passion of Krishna and Radha, uh, Hera's the seat of Zeus in order to bring back excitement to her troubled marriage to the adulterous passion of Lancelot and Guinevere, uh, this collection of sexual encounters ranges from the holy, passionate, and dutiful to the forbidden, earthy, and humorous. So I thought that was, uh, would be interesting. Okay, so another one that I got is um, All Women Are Healers, A Comprehensive Guide to Natural Healing by Diane Stein. And I have a few books by Diane Stein already, I think. Two. Definitely one, but I think two. Um, so I got this one, and, uh, so in here it has some stuff about acupuncture, um, yeah, diagrams, some diagrams, like, I just passed one. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, so, let's see, some of the things that are in this book laying on of stones and crystal patterns, the ancient art of Reiki, Reiki and laying on of hands, uh, Chinese healing and acupuncture, foot and hand reflexology, pendulum, muscle, muscle testing and applied kinesiology, um, using herbs, homeopathy, so uh, general dexters is also covered in here, so um, I got that. And then there's this one that, uh, for years I was like get that book and then I was like no and maybe I'm not um but every time I see reviews on it or I see people doing the program um it always just rekindles my interest and since I saw it in half price books I decided why not and it was uh 99 at half price books and the regular price is 19.95 so I got Wicca year and a day um, by Timothy Roderick. So that's there. And I'm sure many of you have seen this book, owned this book. I'm just late to the game. <laughs> so that's the year and a day uh, system. Uh, then I got The Once and Future Goddess, a sweeping, vis a sweeping visual chronicle of the sacred feminine and her emergence in the cultural mythology of our time and this is by oh gosh it's so hard to read the name with this dark cover um eleanor gaden i'm gonna say that's what it is like look look at look at this okay well i gotta clear okay look how dark this cover is and look at the color they decided to put the name in i mean come on come on come on <laughs> anyways um so there are pictures in it i think the person that last owned this book was a smoker um there are pictures in here there's some uh there's some more and some more uh so, I guess, let's see. Uh, some of the things that are talked about in here. Oh, there's some color pictures as well. Uh, let's see. This person was definitely a smoker. So anyways, there's some color pictures in the book. Okay, so okay, so the book is divided into uh, three parts. And so the first part is called In the Beginning, The Sacred Way of the Goddess. Um, you go through the Ice Age, um, the unfolding of her myths, birth, death, and regeneration, Old Europe, uh, Crete, um, part two is the patriarchal takeover, the taming of the goddess, and there is uh, 
talks about Sumer, the descent of Inanna, uh, Demeter's mysteries, the Hebrew goddess, and monotheism, is the virgin a goddess, the problem of the immaculate womb. Part three is the reemergence of the goddess, a symbol for our time. Uh, some of the things in this section is um, the way of the goddess, a earth-based spirituality, the goddess within, a source of empowerment for women, the resurrection of the body and resacralization of sexuality. Ha! I got the word. Um, Gaia consciousness, ecological wisdom for the renewal of life on our planet. So that's just some of the topics that's covered in this book here. Okay, so the next book is Pop Goes the Witch, the Disinformation Guide to the 21st Century Witch. And it is edited by Fiona Horn. So here is the book. And this is more like a compilation of articles, stories by various uh, witches. Uh, so let's see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay. So some of you'll find okay some of the topics covered is uh, multimedia magic uh, pop culture paganism um, under there there's uh, uh, see articles written by I'm just gonna say articles <laughs> uh, Fiona Horn Tyler uh, Elwood uh, Athena Wolf keep um, uh, some of the things is the magical purpose of horror, a feast of the powers of darkness stalking the dark archetype in mainstream media, um, invoking Buffy, how to use pop culture icons as god forms. Um, and I, I know I've been hearing a lot about um, pop, pop culture, paganism or pop culture iconography and things like that. Um, what else? Because I kind of skipped. <laughs> okay. So, and please bear with me because it is late and I am tired and I had not slept well the night before because the baby has decided it's time to wake up in the middle of the night every night. <laughs> so, there's that. Anyways, some of the other things are stepping out of the shadows, where we come from and where we are going. Um, some some of the articles in that section uh, is written by Phyllis Karat, which I have one of her books, which I absolutely love. Which book was it? I can't remember. <sighs> Morning Glory Zell Ravenheart, uh, who passed away a while ago. Uh, chants the chant the spells and be it done. Uh, a sprinkling of practical magic. Um, so in that section uh, uh, is uh, Lucy Cavendish, Fiona Horn, some of the people in that section. The Holistic Witch, Integrating the Magic of Body and Soul, um, again is uh, something by Lucy Cavendish, Phil, oh my gosh, Brucato, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering names, <laughs> that is not my intent, but that is me, uh, David Wolf. Better, better it be when the moon is full, creating the magical community. Um, you have Gabrielle Clary and Phyllis Karat again, uh, Janet and Stuart Fiar Fiar Ferrara. I always mess up their name. Parallel paths, other kinds of magic, gender blending, love, sex, choice, and freedom. Uh, here you'll have articles by Lucy Cavendish, Carolyn Tully, Christopher Penzack, uh, Fiona Horn, The Words of the Witch, Some Individual Voices for the Craft, Raymond Buckland, uh, Phyllis Karat, um, uh, The Unbroken Circle, Making Contact, 
Oberon Zell Ravenheart and Fiona Thorne has several articles in that section. So I thought this would be very interesting to read. You get um, in informational points of view, however you want to look at it, from various witches in the community. And then the last book is um, Egyptian Mythology and by Veronica Irons. So here's the cover, and it's hardcover. So they have a picture of Horus on the cover. And let's just So you have information on deities, the uh, creation of the world, deities, uh, life after death, and then there's just, you know, that's the sections that's broken down into. So just to get a look at some of the things that's inside here. You have pyramids, and you have some wall uh, art. What else do we have in here? Some more. So, um, some more. So, anyway, I love. Um, ancient Egypt. So that's it. That's all the books uh, that I got. Um, the Amazon books I got a while ago. Um, sometime the very end of September. These books I got. Um, when my mom came to visit and my husband and I went on a date night and part of our date nights whenever my mom comes to visit is usually a trip to Half Price Books because it is the only time we can look at the books without screaming children and typically we would well when we just had the one we would trade off so I would have her while he gets to look around and then he would take her so I can look around. Now with two, there really is no trade-off because the two can drive the one <laughs> parent crazy in the bookstore um, where the oldest is asking for any and everything she sees, whether it's books, toys, whatever. The baby just, she doesn't like being cooped up too long. Um, so if we have her stroller, she's not happy with that. Um, She's at that age where she walks, but she's going to be tired of walking around, but at the same time, she's big enough to where you can't carry her the whole time, you know? So uh, we tend to just go whenever we decide to take a vacation day from work and the kids are at school, which is not often or when my mom comes to visit, which again is not often. She typically comes maybe twice a year. I'm hoping that being that she's retiring at the end of this year, maybe next year she'll come a little bit more, maybe at least three times in a year would be cool. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but that is it for the book haul. So thank you for watching and blessed be.